As always, the first step is to take a look at the anatomy. To review, we'll begin with the spinal column or axial spine. This begins with the cervical region, followed by the thoracic, into the lumbar and the low back, the sacrum, and the caudal vertebrae of the tail. Then we can look at the appendicular skeleton. This is the bones of the front limb and the hind limb. All bones have to connect to other bones to form a structure for weight bearing and movement. This connection point is what we call a joint, and joints are supported by muscles, tendons, and ligaments. The focus in this video is the joining of the forelimb to the spinal column. There is no specific joint to accomplish this. The forelimb of the horse lacks a collarbone or clavicle, which is present in human anatomy. This is special because the only connection between the horse's forelimb and the spine is therefore muscle. The muscles that support the entire fore weight of the horse are often called the shoulder sling or shoulder girdle. They include the pectoral group, which has multiple muscles shown in pink, and the serratus group, which has multiple muscles shown in blue. This lack of bony structure support means that the entire weight of the horse's head, neck, trunk, including muscles, bones, and organs, rests in the sling-like structure that is attached to the forelimb. Let's look at more depth on a 3D model. We began by talking about the axial spine, which includes the head, the main vertebrae all the way to the tail, and the rib cage. We also talked about the appendicular skeleton, which includes the bones of the four limbs. And then we also discussed how the front limb connects to the body with only muscles and no bony structure, so there's no collarbone as there would be in a human. Although there are many other muscles in the area, these indicated with the pink and blue elastics form the sling structure that the axial spine rests in. So this includes the neck, the base of the neck, the trunk, the rib cage, and all the internal organs are supported off the musculature that connects the forelimb to the axial spine. So to look at this from another perspective, we can also turn our little model this way and see how the muscles connect from the neck to the back of the scapula or back of the forelimb and then the back of the forelimb back to the ribcage so you can see how that is a sling-like structure supporting it there and then the pectoral group you can see from the humerus or the one of the arm bones to the sternum the length of the sternum here so you can see how that forms a sling structure there so from this perspective, it's easy to see how the weight of the trunk and forehand is weighted into this sling-like elastic structure and then is supported off the post-like structure of the forelimb. This muscle sling is why the horse has the capability to change the position of the wither and why the back will actually lift up in a horse that moves in self-carriage. Healthy tone is required for both collection and healthy posture. A released wither also has implications on freeing up the shoulders as the horse transitions into this healthy posture. Although this is not nearly the full picture for self-carriage or collection, it is the underlying structure or anatomy which may not be fully obvious when first looking at the horse from an outside perspective.